In a development that has riveted the scientific community and captured public imagination, the Geological Survey of Canada and its research partners have recently highlighted renewed concern about increasing tectonic stress along the Cascadia margin. A catastrophic earthquake in the Pacific Northwest would topple buildings and bridges, not to mention the damage from a tsunami. And now new research is showing another concern that's worse than previously thought. The risk is not just academic. The potential for a magnitude 8 or greater earthquake is genuinely present, with consequences that would ripple through the region via massive ground shaking and tsunamis. The implications are profound. If history is a guide and current evidence confirms substantial tectonic loading, the next rupture could bring devastation to coastal cities, plunge neighborhoods into chaos, and even alter the topography of the Northwest in moments. But how do scientists discern these growing threats? What clues have surfaced in the rocks, the fossil record, and the barely perceptible motions of the Earth itself? And with so much at stake, how are the millions who live above this restless boundary preparing? In this broadcast, we unravel the sequence of discoveries, examine the mounting evidence, and explore the science fueling concern across the Pacific margin. Stay with us as we break down the facts. Chapter 1. Cascadia Stress Spike Detected Recent updates from the Pacific Northwest reveal a sobering scientific consensus. Data gathered through seismic networks, GPS monitoring, and other cutting-edge instruments capture clear signs of escalating tectonic strain at the Cascadia subduction zone. Sensors buried beneath forests and out along the ocean floor have registered subtle but consistent signals, microscopic ground deformations, minute tilts, and low-level seismicity, all pointing toward increasing stress locked between the colliding plates. Why is this significant? Because this is no ordinary fault. The Cascadia subduction zone is a megathrust, an immense sloping boundary where the Juan de Fuca plate is being forced beneath the North American plate. As these plates grind together, they periodically become locked, causing stress to accumulate for centuries. When the fault eventually slips, centuries of stored energy can be unleashed in a matter of moments, sending destructive seismic waves through the region. But separating meaningful stress buildup from the ever-present background noise of Earth's crust is no small feat. Scientists analyze clusters of tiny earthquakes, patterns in slow ground deformation, and changes in the way geological layers interact, all seeking signs of a larger impending event. Are these recent signals a herald of an imminent rupture or part of the cycle of geologic time? Answering this question requires a dive into the science of subduction. Chapter two, Cascadia subduction zone explained. Envision the world's tectonic plates as colossal, unyielding slabs adrift atop the Earth's slow-moving mantle. In the case of the Cascadia subduction zone, the oceanic Juan de Fuca plate disappears beneath the continent at a glacial pace, a process scientists call subduction. This dynamic is common to Earth's most earthquake-prone coasts, but rarely is it so quietly hazardous. Why do subduction zones produce such dramatic earthquakes? Because as the plates collide and interlock, Friction prevents smooth motion. While portions of the plate may slip quietly, most of the boundary remains locked, sometimes for hundreds of years. This silent accumulation of stress can eventually overpower the grip of friction, releasing enormous amounts of energy in one sudden episode, a megathrust earthquake. Researchers monitor Cascadia for the telltale signs of strain, warping of the land, slow uplift, and eastward movement of the coastline. By measuring changes using GPS, ground tilt recordings, and other modern tools, they found that the boundary is once again accumulating stress. These subtle deformations warn of energy being stored beneath the surface. Could these signals be the Earth's way of announcing renewal of danger? To answer, Earth scientists turn to the evidence of the distant past. Chapter 3. Unlocking Ancient Quakes, Fossil-Based Clues. How do we know Cascadia is due for another catastrophic quake? Scientists like those at the University of Pennsylvania have developed novel fossil-based techniques to peer into Cascadia's tumultuous past. Studies of fossil beds and submerged forests provide the timeline for prior megathrust quakes. What secrets lie in ancient fossils and buried trees? Data from ghost forests, stands of trees drowned by sudden land subsidence during previous quakes, allow researchers to determine when the land abruptly sank 
rivers reversed course, and coastlines shifted. After the last great earthquake in 1700, for example, broad tracts of coast plunged in an instant, with forests killed and rivers running backward. Mud encased the roots of trees in tidal flats, freezing the moment in time for later analysis. Today, radiometric dating of these relics, together with analysis of sand layers driven far inland by tsunamis, tells a story of disruption occurring roughly every 250 to 850 years. The most recent event, dated to January 1700, marked 324 years of silence up to the present. The combination of historical quiet and new signs of accumulating stress leaves scientists concerned that Cascadia may be entering another dangerous phase. Chapter 4 Megaquake Potential Magnitude 8 Threat Numbers from recent studies, including those by the U.S. Geological Survey, underscore the risk. A magnitude 8 or greater megathrust earthquake is not just possible, but increasingly likely over future decades given current tectonic loading. The last full-length rupture of Cascadia's 1,000-kilometer fault produced ground-shaking and tsunamis of historical proportions, preserved in both sediment and memory. How would such an event unfold today? The release of energy would be among the most powerful seen in North America, affecting cities from Vancouver through Seattle, Portland, and into Northern California. Violent shaking could endure for several minutes, infrastructure would face unprecedented stress, and shifting landscapes could cause regions to drop by feet or more. Contemporary studies suggest that the impact could be even greater today because of the dense urban development and critical infrastructure now present along the vulnerable coastline. The risks are not hypothetical. Bridges, highways, ports, and neighborhoods all sit atop ground that could liquefy or slump under intense shaking. The ongoing scientific challenge is to accurately assess and communicate this risk so that communities can prepare accordingly. Chapter 5 Coastlines at Risk Sinking and Shifting What happens when the Earth itself abruptly drops? In its most recent event, Sections of the Pacific Northwest coast subsided by more than two meters in seconds. Forest valleys became tidal inlets. Former pastures became salt marshes. How is this possible? When a megathrust earthquake occurs, the abrupt release of strain along the fault can cause large regions to subside. Scientists have mapped the remains of ghost forests along the coast, trees that died en masse from saltwater intrusion after sudden lowering of the land. The memory of rivers that briefly reverse direction, flowing backwards onto changed terrain, is embedded not just in oral histories, but in the geological record. Could a modern rupture sink coastlines again? Evidence and models indicate it is possible, with future earthquakes poised to create the same dramatic landscape changes. Sediment layers and drowned forests provide proof of these transformations, reminding us that Cascadia's quakes do not just shake the earth, they reshape it. Chapter 6 The Science of Silent Earthquakes Beneath Cascadia's apparent stillness, a subtler phenomenon has come to light. The occurrence of silent earthquakes, or slow-slip events. As documented by scientists including Dr. Brian Atwater, USGS, these slow slips do not fracture rock with jolting violence, but involve gradual slippage over days or weeks. What is their significance? Slow-slip events redistribute stress along the fault, sometimes relieving tension, but sometimes transferring and focusing it elsewhere. Their occurrence in other subduction zones has in some cases preceded large earthquakes, although this pattern is not always predictable. Current monitoring in Cascadia shows regular episodes of such slow-slip activity. But whether these episodes signal imminent catastrophe or merely reflect the natural heartbeat of the plate boundary is still debated. The challenge lies in interpreting whether these background whispers of the planet are harbingers of disaster or evidence of tension being bled away. Chapter 7 Tsunami, the Cascadia Chain Reaction One of the greatest threats arising from a Cascadia megathrust rupture is the tsunami that would ensue, sending destructive waves across the Pacific in minutes. Why are Cascadia tsunamis so dangerous? The shape of the continental shelf amplifies incoming waves, and the proximity of many communities to the shoreline means that evacuation times are extremely short. Historic and geological evidence alike 
point to tsunamis capable of inundating coastal regions just minutes after a quake begins. Early warning systems, including networks of ocean buoys and seismic sensors, are in place to detect the first signs of such an event. However, modeling consistently shows that for communities very close to the fault, warning times may be limited to 10 minutes or less. Adequate preparation and planned escape routes become not just prudent, but essential. Chapter 8. Upgrading Seismic Readiness Is the Pacific Northwest prepared for another Cascadia megathrust event? According to recent studies, much work remains. While building codes have improved and public preparedness campaigns are more common, researchers warn that many vulnerabilities persist, especially in infrastructure built before the adoption of modern seismic standards. Planners anticipate scenarios in which electrical grids collapse, airports are disabled, and communities are cut off by landslides and bridge failures. Recovery in affected areas could take months to years. While advances such as early warning apps, updated evacuation mapping, and building retrofits are encouraging, both urban and rural communities in Cascadia remain exposed. The critical question is, will current efforts keep pace with scientific understanding of the risk? Only systematic investment in mitigation, public education, and infrastructure reinforcement can reduce the potential human and economic toll. Chapter 9. Geochemical Signals, Hidden Warnings. Could the Earth itself warn us of the next rupture through subtle chemical signals? Research by leading geophysicists, including Dr. Emily Brodsky, seeks to answer this question by monitoring changes in groundwater flow, gas emissions, and mineral chemistry along the Cascadia margin. Some studies from subduction zones elsewhere have documented minor bursts of gases like radon or changes in groundwater patterns ahead of earthquakes. Cascadia's own record is too brief to draw firm conclusions about such precursors. The search continues as a reliable chemical fingerprint of impending rupture remains science's elusive goal. Should such a signal be found, it could revolutionize earthquake forecasting and greatly improve regional safety. Chapter 10. Indigenous Oral Histories, Living Memory. Long before scientific instruments, indigenous peoples along Cascadia kept detailed oral histories of great earthquakes and tsunamis. Stories passed down through generations describe ground that convulsed, rivers that temporarily reversed, and nights when silence replaced chaos. In recent decades, scientists have come to recognize the remarkable alignment of these narratives with geologically documented events. The detail and precision of these stories, timing, physical effects, landscape changes, have helped anchor the historical record of the 1700 event, even linking it to tsunami accounts recorded in Japan on the same night. Increasingly, geologists are collaborating with local indigenous communities to integrate this knowledge into risk assessment and preparedness plans. These living memories underscore the importance of retaining and respecting multiple sources of knowledge in responding to Cascadia's risk. Chapter 11. Urban Hotspots Where Risk Converges Which areas along Cascadia's length stand to suffer most in the next major quake? Urban hazard maps suggest that cities like Vancouver, Seattle, and Portland face exceptional vulnerability. Built on river valleys and former wetlands, many neighborhoods are underlain by soft sediment, which amplifies shaking during an earthquake. Why does the type of ground matter so much? Seismic energy passing through loose soils travels more slowly, intensifying surface movement like ocean waves building as they approach shore. Critical infrastructure, bridges, hospitals, ports, tends to cluster in these zones, increasing the stakes of any structural failure. Proactive retrofits and smart land use planning can markedly reduce risk. Efforts to identify priority structures for reinforcement and to restrict new development in high liquefaction zones may make the difference between disaster and resilience. Chapter 12. The Megaquake Domino Effect. What unfolds after a major rupture? Geologists warn that a magnitude 8-plus event would likely be followed by weeks or months of aftershocks. Each tremor adds risk to already damaged structures and complicates rescue efforts. Could shaking in Cascadia trigger other major earthquakes nearby? Current research suggests that most aftershocks remain within the region of the main rupture, although stress changes can in rare cases influence adjacent faults. The majority of simulation models do not show a high likelihood of immediately triggering distant faults like those in California. Even contained aftershocks can create cascading challenges, 
interrupting supply lines and overwhelming emergency services throughout the region. For planners and responders, preparedness must encompass not just the first quake, but the series of seismic events that may follow, a sequence that may span weeks and redefine the landscape of recovery. Chapter 13. Advances in Early Warning Technology Are advances in technology giving nature's fury less of a head start? New seismic monitoring systems, submarine cable sensors, and real-time GPS arrays have been deployed along Cascadia's margin in recent years. These networks supply data to agencies and are increasingly tied to public alert systems, including phone-based emergency notifications. How much advance notice is possible? For much of Cascadia, early warning systems can offer seconds to a minute of lead time before the most intense shaking arrives, enough to seek cover, halt trains, and take other life-saving actions. Those very near the rupture, however, may receive little or no warning. Although no system is perfect, ongoing improvements and public education campaigns strengthen the region's capacity to respond. The key is not just detection, but ensuring communities know how to react in the crucial moments following an alert. Chapter 14. Cascadia in Global Context How does Cascadia compare to other global earthquake hotspots? From Japan's Nankai Trough to Chile's Nazca Margin, giant subduction earthquakes pose a rare but extreme danger worldwide. Lessons from the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami in Japan underscore that even advanced societies are deeply vulnerable when infrastructure, response, and public awareness are outmatched by nature. International collaborations in geophysical research, ocean bottom monitoring, and satellite imaging mean that scientists are now sharing critical data across national boundaries. While it remains impossible to predict the exact timing of a megathrust rupture, the collective drive to learn from other subduction zone disasters is making Cascadia's preparedness more robust. Applying global knowledge locally is a central tenet for managing future Cascadia events. Translating lessons from elsewhere into locally relevant strategies for mitigation, response, and recovery. Chapter 15. When the silence breaks. For now, Cascadia sits in uneasy quiet, a silence freighted with risk and anticipation. Every new data point, fossil fragment, and measured tremor brings researchers closer to understanding the true scope of danger and the inner workings of this volatile boundary. Will Cascadia break tomorrow, next year, or another generation from now? Science can only speak in probabilities, refined with each new data set, sharpened by geologic and technological progress. What is certain is that the ground continues to shift, the stress is rising, and the region remains under watch. Across the Pacific Northwest, scientists analyze records, refine models, and work to develop even more sophisticated ways of listening to the rumbling earth. Emergency officials amend plans, communities practice drills, and individuals learn to recognize the potential warnings buried in both science and tradition. Every chapter in the story of Cascadia is inscribed with caution, knowledge, and the promise of resilience. The lesson of the margin is simple and relentless. The Pacific Northwest is shaped by both its beauty and its geological volatility. When centuries of stillness finally give way, those best prepared, having read the warning signs in ancient fossils, ground deformation, and ancestral stories, may fare best in the storm. And when the silence ends, it will not merely be a tale of disaster, but also of learning, adaptation, and the enduring power of understanding what lies beneath our feet.